Hey everyone, Charles here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to take a look at a topic from the Certified Ethical Hacking version 11 curriculum in regard to enumeration. Enumeration means we're trying to gather as much information as possible during a security assessment, including things like network hosts and connected devices, usernames, file shares, and more. Here in this video, we're going to look specifically at one type of enumeration, that being SNMP enumeration, Simple Network Management Protocol. This protocol is used for monitoring devices on a network. It's embedded into all sorts of IP capable devices, and it's very commonly found across a wide variety of devices and operating systems. Let's jump in and take a look. Another quick enumeration task we can perform is SNMP enumeration. SNMP stands for Simple Network Management Protocol, and it can provide us with a wealth of information about a system. So let's look at this from our terminal. We can use the tool SNMP-check, followed by the target IP address, which in my case is my Windows device 10.0.2.6, and I'll hit enter. And we're gonna get a really, really long output here, so let me scroll all the way back to the top of this output, and we'll start looking at some of the information that we found. So right away, you can see that the first attempt here, where it tried to connect, that was using SNMP version one, and it was also using community public. We see that listed at the end. What does that mean? Well, SNMP has three distinct versions. We have SNMP version one, which is the original protocol. We have SNMP version two C, which was updated with some enhancements. Both of those versions do use what are called community strings, which are essentially passwords, which are required in order for devices to share information with one another. The community string used here, you can see, is public, which is a well-known default community string for public read-only access. And that did, in fact, work in this case. SNMP version 3 is the newest version of SNMP, and that uses both encryption and authentication in order to ensure that SNMP messages are not intercepted. And if they are, the encryption ensures that the information can't be read. Now, interestingly, Microsoft has never implemented SNMP version 3 yet. They only support those first two versions. Newer releases of Windows does have SNMP disabled by default to try and shore up some of this vulnerability, but we can still enable that. Without a native SNMP version 3 function in Windows, that means if you enable SNMP, you would have to install a third-party SNMP version 3 agent if you want the protection of encryption and authentication. And there are several of those available. Now, all that to say, if a Windows server is using the native SNMP agent, it's going to be using an older version of SNMP as we see here, which means there is the potential for enumeration. What else can we see here? Well, we of course see our host IP address, we see the host name, which is accounting-12. We also see information about the hardware, which is certainly helpful when we begin crafting attacks and looking for hardware vulnerabilities that we can take advantage of. We see the domain listed here at the bottom, of course, which is finance. And we also see information from inside of the SNMP message itself. We see a contact listed as Charles, the location listed as networking. So this is the user's contact name and the computer location or maybe the organizational unit on the domain that would receive this data. So that's definitely something of interest to note. Further down, if we continue to go down here, we see a list of user accounts that were discovered. These are all valid with SNMP. And this tells us about a couple of accounts that are local to this host itself, which is very useful information to have. We see a user account for John, and we see a user account for Sarah. So now we have an awareness about a couple of local accounts on this machine. And if we continue to scroll down, we're going to see more and more information about the hardware itself. For instance, here we see that this is using an Intel Pro Gigabit desktop adapter. So we can glean that this is most likely a desktop computer. Further down at the bottom of our hardware output, we're gonna see some routing information. Let me get down to that particular area. There we go. We see the routing information table listed here. We see the destination of all zeros. That means this is the default gateway. And the default gateway for this particular network is 10.0.2.1. 
Underneath that, we see a list of listening ports for TCP connections. We see all of those listed here. And likewise, we see listening ports for UDP as well. And we also have a list of network services discovered running on the host. We see things like a DNS client, we see DHCP client, task scheduler, Windows update, and lots more. Below that, we're even going to see process ID numbers. We see those here. These include the names of the services and the parameters. And at the bottom, we're going to see some software components and user shares listed down here as well. Here's the file system information, more device IDs. There's our software components and there's our user share. So you can see we have an incredible amount of information here that will help us as we go forward. We can also perform some actions with Metasploit as well. So let's use the command MSF console to get Metasploit launched. And once we do this, one of the easy ways that we can look through Metasploit modules is we can perform a search. We can search for SNMP modules by saying search SNMP. And this is going to return results back for everywhere that we have a module that can be used with SNMP. Let's say we want to use this SNMP login module. We see that highlighted here. And I'll also point out that all these have module numbers. This particular module is number 24. So we could paste in this path into our terminal, but it's much easier just to use the module number when we want to call one of those out. So let's do that. Let's say use 24. And now you can see our terminal has changed to use that SNMP login function of Metasploit. Now we want to say set our hosts and we want to point that over to our target 10.0.2.6. We'll hit enter. We see our target has been set. So let's just say run and hit enter to get that going. Now you can see that Right away, we did have a successful login, which we already knew about, but I did want to show you how Metasploit can attempt this login. We see that this login was successful. It was with the public community string. This is a read only access level, so not super helpful in this case. If we had edit access, that's definitely more interesting to us. Regardless, you could also perform enumeration with Metasploit just as we did with our initial command. If we again say search for SNMP, again, we see our search results here. Let's say we want to use module number 25, which is SNMP enumeration. So we'll say use 25 set our hosts to 10.0.2.6. We'll say run. And you can see in our output, we have the same information as we saw from that initial output. So a couple of options here for performing SNMP enumeration. Lots of great intelligence can be gathered from SNMP messages. That's all for now. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider subscribing, leaving a comment, or sharing this video with someone you think may enjoy it. That's the best way you can support what I'm doing. If you'd like to support the content I'm creating even more, please consider checking out the membership links found in the video description. I hope you found this content useful and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.